Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> there is a slight rotation. Oh. oh my god. And I'm looking from the top. Like this. This one's a tad more aggressive. <sighs> Can I go a little harder on this? <sighs> oh, that was way more than last time. <laughs> Unlock your full potential at Crack Addicts. Let's start with the low back pain. You had a long time, chronic low back pain. Mm -hmm. We're talking decades. Low intensity wasn't killing you, but still always right. there. Right, left, right. One more than the other? No. Okay, lower SI. Left, right, left, right. One more than the other? The left one feels a little bit. A little bit lower left. That's, that was the primary that we adjusted first last time as well. Yeah. Let's see how these trigger points are doing. Right side of trigger back. point. Right side, right? Yeah. This one too? Yes, no? I think so, a little bit. I did not adjust the lumbar last time, which is a double SI joint. We had, a, we had a bunch of thoracic adjustments here. This thoracic lumbar transition area we did with an anterior, that was really big. It's definitely warm up here. Mm -hmm. Muscles are working hard. Yeah. Not so much down here. All right, bring your chin down to your chest. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. a little crack and crunchy there. Mm -hmm. yep. The restricted movement on that C7 again. That was a big adjustment last time. Still needs to be adjusted here today. It's actually T1. All right, uh, let's see, let's go to march in place. Like that? Yep. And that, that right hip just lags a little bit comparatively to the left, even though the left was the tender. And that's why we adjusted that bilateral SI joint last time. So we really need to look at both SI joints again. Okay, tracing up to the bottom of the glute fold, it's lower on the right, that matches the short leg that we saw last time. Looking from the top, there's no rotations to the left or right, not much hypertonicity in the glute major, just this trigger point up there. All right, let's do this. We're gonna measure the movement of the sacrum. Go ahead and bend forward and touch your toes. Good, only movement at the end. Come back up here, mostly restricted in that left SI joint. Going over to the right side, the same thing. Touch your toes. More movement on the right side, come back up. So there is hypermobility on that right side, but not the whole joint, just part of the joint is stuck.
Oh, okay, let's hit this trigger point here. I'm going to take a deep breath in. It's okay, good. Deep breath in. Breathe. In. Breathe. Mm. Breathe.
Got a deep breath in through your nose. Now, sink in here. Let it all go. The shoulders drop in. Good. Good. Push in this direction. Good. Shoulders go. Oh. Damn it. Hmm. Gotta get that from the other side. Good. Keep coming down. Good, 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 good. One more time, let, let the shoulders go. Mm. All the way down, all the way down, all the way down. Oh, that felt good. It's already starting to move. That was the easy one. <laughs> here like this. Okay, deep breath in. And out. Let the shoulder go here. There's more, hold on. Let the hips go, let the shoulders go. One more to make sure I got it all. Go ahead, oh. lay on your back. Breathing, deep breath in and out. Got shoulders coming up. A little bit more. And your back. Whoa. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That was serious. Yeah, it was. That was really serious. Ring out. I did. I listen. You first of all, thank you so much. How did, did you? All right. So well, uh, we obviously had some really good um, results from just the adjustment. Mm -hmm. Did you feel anything when you took the nose out or nose ring out? What was it like that day, or or like the day after? I was like, all right, we're gonna work on alignment. <laughs> I don't know that I felt differently from the nose ring, but I felt differently after our session. Okay. I definitely felt like uh, all this like crazy trauma from this year sort of like shook loose and I'm working out more stuff. Cool. Yeah. All right, let's work out some other stuff here. <laughs> all right, so ileocecal valve first. Here's the belly button. Here's the ASI. Yes, we connect these two points. We start there for the ileocecal valve. Nice belly breaths.
Breathing. Good. How's it feel? It's better than the last time. What? It's better than the last time. Follow the breath here, just like that. Oh! Like that. Oh my god! Oh, that was way more than last time. Could read it out. Uh, oh, good if the lip quiver's back too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got big releases uh, there for you on that one. Yeah. I don't, were my legs up last time? Yes. Oh. <sighs> I love that. It feels great. I feel like I'm. Floating a little bit. Are you a, do you feel like a, a butterfly floating or like a hawk <laughs> way up in the stratosphere floating? I feel like like giddy floating. So maybe a butterfly. <laughs> I have butterfly vibes right now. <laughs> oh, I'm still quivering too. My lips still quiver. Tell me about your neck pain. So it usually is associated with my migraines. I can feel it pre-migraine and it feels like there's a golf ball back of my neck right where the skull and the neck kind of meet. Did you have any birth trauma? Or when you were born, do you know how you were born? Quickly. Okay. Almost in the car, but that's about it. Okay, that's usually not associated with trauma. Does the neck pain always start before the migraine or no? Yes. Yeah, it's usually, that's one of the precursors. Okay, how, how often do you have an episode? They used to be 15 a month until I started Botox treatment. When you have a migraine and there's always that aura of the neck pain first, then often those are, are, are musculoskeletal induced migraines. So, but it sounds like there's a possibility for a combination of migraines. When you have elasticity of your joints, when you have hypermobility in your joints, that elasticity is sometimes in other connective tissue as well, like your uh, arteries and, and veins. And so sometimes that elasticity uh, inside of an artery or a vein can also contribute to migraines. We'll know after I adjust you. Heel strike, mid stance, and toe off. 
They look mostly symmetrical. I don't see any bowing of the Achilles tendon. Maybe slight pronation, but it is symmetrical on both sides. Okay, looking at the shoulder height, it looks a possible high left shoulder. Yep, confirmed from the back too. Very little head tilt and also very little um, forward head posture as well. There is a slight high left ear. All right, let's check this out. Yeah, there is some decrease in the, leave that down. There is some decrease actually in the left arch more so than the right arch. Go ahead and turn around and face that way. Let me see your Achilles again. Yeah, there is more bowing here than I thought, especially on the left. So we definitely have a pronated left. Good, and it looks like a high right hip, high left shoulder. Oh, okay, just observing the spine first. We do have a high left shoulder, that is confirmed. High left ear, high left mastoid. That's good. Okay, I'm gonna begin with a very gentle scan on the top of your spine, okay? Yeah, and you do have the, this is called a stork bite right here. This is a genetic trait. Uh, have you ever heard of MTHFR? No. Do you know what that is? It's some, some of the things that they kind of classify together as how you're developing genetically and, and you get things like Ehlers-Danlos syndrome with it. Besides so that not on, is it on the left? Usually. It can be on the right though. Okay, I'm gonna do a temperature evaluation with the back of my hands, which are more sensitive to temperature. Very consistent. Top to bottom, left to right, all throughout the spine. We're warmer on the right side of your neck. That's the, these muscles are working a little bit harder over here. Okay, I'm gonna dig a little bit deeper into your spine. Do these feel the same to you, right or left? They little, do not feel the same. A little bit more tender over here? Definitely. Okay, SI joint palpation. Do you have tenderness here? A little bit. What about this left side? More so. More on the left? Mm -hmm. Okay, lower S high. Any here? A little bit. More so here? Yes. How about down here? Lower right? No, not really. Upper left S high. Okay, bring your chin down to your chest. Good overall motion there. Back up. Lower cervical spine moves nicely. There is some restriction here at C3, the tiniest vertebra the entire spine. Is that one tender right there? I wouldn't say tender, but I can feel it more so than at the other spots. Okay, let's do this now. Bring your uh, left ear down to your shoulder. So then just crack? A little bit. Okay, right side. Oh, okay. Here. Right behind the ear. That's where it cracked? Mm -hmm. Does this feel restricted toward 
it's, uh, it's compared to this side. Which side feels more constricted, left or right? They feel about the same. The right side maybe a little more. Do you feel that when you come over to the right side, you compensate and you, you turn your head? You're rotating around a fixation before. I, I've hmm. never really felt anything like this. So it's like when you go this side, that's a straight lateral flexion, okay? You're going straight down your shoulder. But then when you go this way, your chin just lifts up and you, you rotate to the left a little bit to compensate. It's a hard one to feel. It's subtle. So we're gonna trace up to the bottom of the glute, fold it is lower on the right. That means your right hip is, is turned back like that. And looking from the top, they look pretty symmetrical. I don't see any rotations, but actually uh, put your toes together. Good. Okay, looking from the top, it is slightly rotated externally on the right, so maybe the right's come out. Okay, very symmetrical here. I don't see any rib humping. There is a slight rotation. Maybe that's what we're seeing. There's just a little bit more prominence in the musculature on the left. Go ahead and stand back up. So you don't have a curvature. You don't have any scoliosis of your spine, but there is some compensation happening down here, just a little bit of a rotation. Levator scapula, which one is more tender here? I would say left. Right short stays short, which points towards the left SI joint, which is where it was tender on palpation. Down. One side easier than the other? I'd say the right side's easier. So a three. Three confirmations on the left SI joint. So in the trap fibers, right or left, which is more tender? Left. Is it significant? No. Like is this terrible right here? That's not great, yeah. Okay, we're gonna work out some of this tension here. your pain threshold? Pretty high. Can I go a little harder on this? Sure. Because it's not changing as I'm working on it. Are good? Pressure's good? Yep.
All right, let's give that a try. Go ahead and take a deep breath in. Now, good shoulders relaxing. Good. Just relax here. Good, let it go, let it go. Very nice, almost there. I'm gonna bend the top like this. Good, I'm gonna bring it forward here to get it up flat. And we'll pull this arm out like this. Good. Good, we're gonna bring this down. Shoulders relaxed. Go down, sinking in. Good. One more time, let it go. Good. Gentle, gentle, gentle. Bring your back. How's that? That was nice. Okay, so now we're gonna adjust the lumbar spine. Good, same thing. Your shoulders are stretching in this way. Gentle, gentle, gentle. There's more, hold on. Good. Now let's see. Go ahead and turn your head to the right. I knew it. Okay, back to center. Okay, now turn your head to the left. Back to center. You lefty? I'm right. Hmm. Sometimes lefty. <laughs> what does that mean? I can I can write with my left hand, just not as well as my right. So I am right dominant, but I did try to train my left arm to do the same thing. Okay. Just out of curiosity, if I could. Okay, let's do this now. Bring your right ear down to your shoulder. Yeah, back to center. We're gonna bring your head over to the side. Following your breath, we're just gonna follow just like this, and then we're gonna push it good. You're doing, you're perfect right now. You're nice and relaxed. Good breathing and sinking in. Good, right there. That was a nice one. Back at the top of the spine. We have to correct the rotation now. So we're just going to bring your head over to the side like this and then very gently come up like that, okay? Okay. Let me test the bottom of the spine too, actually. Seven. Oh, that feels like it needs a two. Okay, we're going to do two adjustments. First, here like this, gentle, gentle. Good. Spine. And bring this guy over. How's that? I definitely have not felt anything like that before. Okay, I'm gonna adjust your ankles now. We're gonna pull down in this direction like that, okay? One more time. I want you to do this at home, okay? I want you to find the spot just like I just showed you. Mm -hmm. Belly button, front of your hip. Connect the two. Yours is just slightly more medial. Oh man. Small circles. 
I even felt that shift. You felt it? Mm -hmm. Deep belly breaths into my fingers. This is a diaphragm manipulation. Keep going. Swishy. <laughs> Sounds like you're drinking enough water. <laughs> yes. Sounds good. This one's a tad more aggressive than the other ones, okay? Nice and gentle breathing. Go ahead and take a deep breath in. And out. Sinking in shoulders and hips. Go, let's follow the next breath out. Just really sinking in. Letting the head and shoulders, neck. Good. Letting it all go. That was a lot. <laughs> that was good though. I think parts of my spine adjusted that I haven't adjusted in a good 10 years. You're good. We're going to bring this way back like this. So this atlas is twisted this way. So this adjustment pushes it back. This is the rare part of your listing. This is the one that I don't see very often. Okay, shoulders and hips. Everything's sinking in. 